10 years ago when we got together uh, between uh, MIT and the University of Southampton, we really had the goal to make the web an object of study. Uh, a lot of us had been involved in the development of web technology in various ways and studying uh, public policy issues related to the web, but we hadn't really yet had a, a formal uh, organized way of studying the web. And we wanted to do two things. Uh, first of all, we wanted to understand how to evolve the web so that it would meet new needs. And secondly, we wanted to be able to look at the web as a, as a large and complex system. Uh, when I'll never forget when I was talking with a colleague of mine who's a law professor uh, and studies these issues about web science. I tried to explain to him what we were doing and he said, oh, you mean you want to include the people in the web? And I said, yeah, that's right. We want to understand how the web works, including the people in it, because that's really the only way to understand the web. I think that over the last 10 years, it's been very exciting to see that we've been able to train a whole group of computer scientists and, and uh, uh, social scientists, legal scholars, others, who've really learned uh, how to look at the web uh, as a system, as a unique phenomenon. Uh, and I think we've learned a lot about privacy. We've learned a lot about security. We've learned a lot about the behavior of groups of people on the web. So I think, I think we've had a very exciting uh, first decade of web science. I think it's really interesting the academic subjects that are being born out of these entirely new industries and dominant technologies. You know, the study of the systems and the designs and the things that we now rely on for a lot of our um, daily lives, very, very important. And uh, the same um, advances I would imagine will happen in the subject as the subject is studying. So, you know, machine learning is going to impact the study of web science as much as it's going to impact us in the world. So, I imagine it's a pretty exciting time to be a web scientist. When I sort of found out about web science and I realised that actually I'd been doing web science all my life as a practitioner. So, so even though I had done work in the academic space, um, actually my whole point about it is how can we bring the work that's being done in the academic space to the real world, to people who are making key decisions and they need the reflection that the academic perspective can provide, but they need it very quickly and, uh, and they need to act on it now. Well, there's much talk about big data guiding the actions of big business, but most data is dumb unless it's properly analysed and understood. Web science is helping companies understand the huge amount of data that's being generated by the internet and channeling it for proper social and commercial application. Although the web is a technical artefact and the W3C is a technical standards body, it would be remiss of us not to appreciate it would be failing in our duty if we didn't recognize the enormous social impact that it has and the power that it has in changing things. Knowledge is power. Every dictator in the world, the first thing they do is to shut down the media, to control the information. The web is built on openness and, and um, um, equality and equal access and it's something that we believe in passionately. Timbal is, is always you know, talking about net neutrality and how important it is that my information is, is as accessible to you as Netflix because you never know what, which one's going to be more important. So that social impact and the mix of society and technology is a phenomenon that has happened in the last 25 years. That deserves a lot of study. Web science can celebrate four key achievements over the past 10 years. Firstly, it has pioneered the idea that the web and its uses should be studied systematically and designed and managed scientifically. Secondly, web science is now established as a valid engineering discipline for teaching and research with its own syllabus and a credible research agenda. Thirdly, international conferences on web science are now part of the landscape and research and teaching collaborations have been set up between groups around the world, building a real web science community. And finally, web science and web scientists are now a source of authoritative influence and advice to governments and industries internationally. The contribution of web science over the last 10 years has been to move from a stri strictly technical view on the World Wide Web to a view where the web is viewed as a socio-technical cultural construct 
which needs to be investigated from a lot of different uh, disciplines and a lot of different angles. Web Science officially started up before the launch of the smartphone, before Apple introduced the iPhone, and so we were looking at a very different web. And in the last 10 years, the web has completely revolutionized. The web we have now is totally different to the web we had then, the web we were starting to um, think about and trying to understand the, the place of this technology in society and the effect that it was having at such a large scale. We were standing around looking at the looking at the web saying, oh, what are all the rules for this? How does it work in society? Look at this impact it's having. And then all of a sudden, it just expanded and grew into something even huger um, really quickly. And what web science has, has given to the world is a perspective on the web that does not just swallow this technology whole, but it, it the, allows us to look at it and say, what kind of world are we expecting to live in? How does this technology measure up to our expectations, um, to, our, to all of the social norms that we've developed over uh, the, the last hundred years? Um, and to hold it to account in some ways as we grasp with its novelty and as we grasp hold of its capabilities for the future. What's good about web science, by focusing on the interface on the software that people actually use to interact with the internet. It sort of moves away a bit from the wires and the nuts and bolts of the internet towards two things. One is it, it focuses on, on people, on, on, on users and how people interact with, with the internet and that's important because I guess it drew attention away towards the kind of thing that I and my colleagues do, towards the social sciences, towards those disciplines that are interested in human behaviour um, rather than um, rather than the technology, so that I think that was a very important thing to do. And the other thing is by doing precisely that, by focusing on the behaviour of people, web science has also focused perhaps at an early stage, perhaps before the whole big data revolution came along, there was a focus on data and the kind of data that the web was generating, which provides very useful insight into um, how people behave and how institutions behave. Um, and I think that's important too. It allowed web science to court, sort of um, spawn a nascent field of, of, of data science. The biggest thing that web science has actually contributed to me is the understanding of what a socio-technical machine is. It took me a long time actually to really cotton on to the difference between computer science and, um, and the web and the difference between the internet and the web and the importance of recognising the socio element and the technical element. And I really think this is something that not a lot of people have, have realised. If you look back at the way that the internet developed, it's always been a socio-technical machine. As we started off with cyberspace and the way that the banks built systems and you see human beings sat on the end of terminals operating over data, you can't really remove the people from the machines or the machines from the people. And just to raise that by way of awareness is a massive deal. And to then provide a layer of academic study and discipline as they do to it, I think is probably one of the most important areas of study going. I think that 10 year period has seen a huge um, change in the way the web is used. It's pervasive globally, it's, it's deeply adopted. Whereas before, perhaps, people were using it as an adjunct to life, now it mediates people's lives. So it's become deeply part of society. And that is very much the role of web science uh, in, in taking a look at that, standing back. I mean, so many people are involved in the operation of the web, but web science takes a step back and reflects on the web as, a, as an artifact, as an entity, and looks at its evolution. And that's hugely important given the significance of the web to society today. Web science has achieved a lot in the last 10 years. If we think about where we were a decade ago, the web was already a very successful phenomenon, both in ter technical terms, um, but also with respect to its impact on economy and society and, and pretty much everything around us. But in the last 10 years, um, we have managed to create 
a community around web science um, to create awareness um, in uh, the broader world that we need to think about the web as much more than a bunch of standards um, and internet protocols um, and we need to think about the impact that the web as a medium, as an environment has had on, on, on different areas and the types of methods that we need from disciplines other than computing to truly understand how it came about and where it will go. The web has become many things. It's a place where we exchange information, where we access information, where we can interact with one another, where we can buy things. So it's much more than the original web where we just accessed internet pages and, and browsed them. Nowadays, this is an interactive medium that uh, influences many aspects of our modern life and this is where web science has contributed. It helps us to understand how this interaction between people, groups of people and the web actually works. Social media has been a phenomenal growth area um, and web science is allowed to frame these new media um, including you know beyond the interaction technologies of Facebook, Twitter but into uh, the more knowledge-based um, social repositories such as Wikipedia, Google and so on. The framing of these as social machines I think has been a very useful contribution of web science. Essentially looking at how these technologies broker communication between individuals all over the world and allow information to be produced and propagated in real time. That has been a, a, a big contribution. Web science has really embraced the interdisciplinary aspects of social research, web-based research. Um, I'm a computer scientist and I'm, I suppose I'm saying this is uh, in relation to other um, sub-disciplines of computer science. Um, so the web is a socio-technical ecosystem. Um, it is based around technology but is developed by people. It changes as people's uses change and also people's uses change based on uh, technologies that are built upon the web, for example, social media. Um, and I think the advantage of the interdisciplinary aspects allow us to draw insights from the web as a technical framework, as well as a social political ecosystem. Um, and of course, being able to uh, link up more closely with social sciences allows us to give us full and proper diligence to ethical research, which is definitely a requirement when looking at how people are interacting online. Web science's main contribution in the last decade has really been to get people to think of the study of the web as a scientific discipline, to think about it in terms of the various properties that emerge at web scale. When you've got billions of people and billions of machines, there are macro properties, emergent properties from all of that that require study. Um, web science has drawn attention to that, there are now also, of course, uh, a whole range of courses on offer in web science. So on the formal training side, but on the awareness in research terms, it's made a huge difference. Web science is the single most significant silver bullet of our time to address grand societal challenges. These challenges include everything from the disaster recovery, the global health challenges that we face, innovation and accelerating innovation, as well as things that are literally out of this earth, and that includes space travel to places like Mars. The advent of the web has dramatically changed the way society exists today, and that is not going to change anytime soon. The biggest contribution that web science has made over the past decade is in its really deep commitment to bringing together people around the world, in particular, of course, through the Web Science Trust network of labs, but also through other means, and in bringing together academic disciplines who normally are more divided than they are together in terms of the research and education that they do. And for me, that actually was the genius of the original proposal for web science as it was laid out 10 years ago. I've been um, working with the web um, since its inception and with uh, Tim Berners-Lee. And when, um, in to about 2004, when we were thinking about why the semantic web wasn't taking off, why people weren't beginning to use it. This was all part of Tim's original vision. And we looked back at how the web had evolved in the previous 14 years, and we realised 
rather stupidly that it wasn't it didn't evolve just because of the technology that was the facilitator it evolves because of what people do with it the most important thing is that we got people to think about studying the web from an interdisciplinary perspective as a socio-technical system it could have been left just to computer scientists to, and, and then you're missing most of the equation. We have to study it from the point of view of um, sociology and economics and politics and law and mathematics and you have to take these different perspectives to understand what's going on. Uh, and that's what's so fundamentally important about web science. Web scientists, internet scientists, call them what you will, are trained to think of things from a human perspective, not just from a machine perspective. Mm -hmm.